<laughs> right, we're talking about race. It actually, you know, triggered a really great conversation on the show today, so we wanted to kind of continue it with the uh, white boy, Burt Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> And Ryan Smith <laughs> and me. Christy's here just because she's beautiful. <laughs> well, whatever you need from me. Christy could give us the perspective from the hood, too. Yeah. The makeup hood? room. The makeup room. That's what it's all about. <laughs> it's a different kind of hood. Um, but so, Eric, what was it that grabbed your attention that you wanted us to kind of continue the conversation? I mean, what, what grabbed my attention was basically this Bert saying that I'm aware of it. But not really. I can't fully empathize. Sure. You know, like I've said before that, you know, the conversations I've had with my producers before that are black, that the fact that he has to have a conversation with his black son or black daughter, um, that they are going to be put in situations just because of their, the color of their skin is never a conversation that I would even dream about of having with my white son. It just doesn't happen. So I don't know that I can completely connect with what you're saying because it's yeah. an experience that I know that I will never have. Yeah. See that interesting, and that I was saying, and I got a little pushback that because I was the minority in my school, uh -huh. that my mom talked to me about race and all of that really early on because yeah. there were kids that were picking on me because I was white, and, and she needed me to understand why that was happening. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't really grasp it. As I think an they were picking on you just because you had a bad attitude. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think it had anything to do with you. Smart mouth, white. just like always. Just because I was a better athlete, okay, and See, student. That's why they were picking on there you. There you go. Well, you know what it is. It, this is this is the thing. You suffered from something in school that can't be discounted. Someone treated you differently because of the way you looked. Right. And so I'm I'm not trying to lessen that. But what I'm trying to say is, black folks, we walk out in the world with a skin tone, a look that we can never take off. Mm -hmm. Not that we would want to, because I would never want to. But the point is, everywhere we go, we experience this in some way. And the the hardest discussion for a parent to have is that first time, because I had it with my parents. That first time you come home and you say, you know, Mom, why did they do something different with them? Why was I treated differently there? I don't really get that. And then parents have to figure out what to say on that mm -hmm. level. That is something that never changes. And we were, we were using the Trayvon Martin part as a discussion, uh, as a way to get into this discussion. But I think one of the overall points is we still live in a country where people do not view black people as they do view white people. And it's the same with a lot of other cultures. And as long as that continues, there's this discussion that needs to keep happening. And we can't sweep it into, in my mind, well, this was a situation where a guy was wearing a hoodie. I've gone out with my suit on and been treated like crap. Do you think, I mean, we've got a black president. Mm -hmm. We have Oprah Winfrey. We have Bill Cosby. We have all these yeah. really successful, wonderful people in the African-American community. Why is that not helping people? Because, because it's, it's still the minority. Oh, no, no, because it's, it's, it's still the it's minority. Still the minority. It's still the minority, but also it's, you know, it's I, I mean, think how we have long to, did it take us to get a black president? I think we have to acknowledge <laughs> right, that it's right. been a thing in our culture for generations. Mm -hmm. One thing that really kind of gets me is when I talk to people who are my age and they say, well, I don't really see why racism comes into play these days. I just don't see it in my environment. And I have to call BS on that immediately. Where I grew up, you had black people in one area, white people in another area. It was very clear mm -hmm. that there was a difference between you and white people. And to say that it didn't exist, I think, is part of our problem in this country. Well, you know what else it does But history though. also, history is being lost as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I learned about lynching. I learned about yeah. slavery. I learned about all that um, as history. Whereas I know some classrooms don't even address those mm -hmm. issues yeah. anymore. I mean, that's been like taken out of the curriculum, depending on where you yeah. grow up. Also, too, I think, Ryan, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm talked to about, when, I, when my parents talk to me about racism, you know, I, they never said, you know, your grandmother experienced slavery or your grandfather yeah. was mm -hmm. lynched. It's, mm -hmm. in, it's very interesting, like for an African-American family, mm -hmm. more than likely someone in your 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 family, your bloodline, your family has, this experience. has experienced yeah. this. But it's different for us. I'll tell you one way in which my parents handled this that I thought was beautiful, and I'll do it the same way with my kids. When I used to come to them and talk about, well, why am I treated differently? Why are people saying these kinds of things to me? They would say, don't let somebody who's ignorant take a second mm -hmm. in your head. Mm -hmm. And the way they would kind of pose it is this because they knew I was kind of an ambitious kid and I want to do a lot with my life, they would say, you have so much to do, right? There's so many things you want to do in life. Yeah, yeah, but you know, sometimes people treat me differently because I'm black. And they're like, you don't have time to think about that. Just focus on you. See, and when somebody's so ignorant to you, when somebody's ignorant to you, just say, you know what, I don't have time for that. Well, yeah. that's And so you, don't, you, don't, you realize that it's there, uh -huh. 
But the thing is, you can't make it part of who you are and part of who that discussion about you becomes. Because once you do that, you're letting other people win. You're letting right. the ignorant people win, and you can't let it happen. That's hard when you're young, though. Mm -hmm. when, yeah. when things, you know, awful things are said to you. I mm -hmm. still remember things said to me when I, I remember so the I. moments. I remember yeah. the names. I re And it was based on my color. And yep. that doesn't go away. Wait. Anna, our social media producer, mm -hmm. got our yes. social accounts lit up on this. Yeah, people are saying that this is a conversation that needs to happen, mm -hmm. but they yeah are saying addressing something that you guys haven't addressed yet okay. and that is people are saying it's not just a black and white issue so Michael wrote so when 9-11 happened it was wrong for my grandmother to tell my dad that and my uncles to shave their beards and slap an American flag sticker on their cars so that no one would mistake them for radical Muslim terrorists mm. just wow. because Hindus are brown too we sh so I should have told her, don't worry about it. Americans only target black people, right? <laughs> oh, so, wow. That's wow. a great point. That's a really you great know, point. There's so, there's so much ignorance in the world. And here's where I, I would disagree with what you were saying about mm -hmm. when somebody makes an ignorant statement. We have a, a segment on my show that we call... Um, uh, ask us anything yeah. and we bring in a panel of black people sometimes we bring in Latinos and it's specifically for white people to ask ignorant questions <laughs> that they've always wanted to ask that's such a but, brilliant idea <laughs> but they've always I'm been too scared that idea. you they've gave always, some hurt asking but they've always been too scared to ask yeah. black people and for me it's like I think that you have to be patient enough to educate during the ignorant questions and not get offended by them because you cannot get to a situation where uh, the racial divide is is less yeah. if we don't start educating and understand each other better. So well, you got to work. And if you don't have the freedom to ask a question yeah. that you might be right. embarrassed to ask without feeling that then you're going to get judged and you're mm -hmm. going to be called a racist just because you asked a question. Yeah. And it wasn't meant like that. But I get. Yeah. I get how somebody might ask a question. You might go, Oh no, you did not go there.